Fara Malim, former Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly of Kenya, welcome to the JSO interview. Thank you. As someone who belongs to ODM, which is part of the Cord Coalition, what might your views be on the Kethi Kilonzo saga, so to speak? I must admit that uh, from the outset, I haven't been following it up that very closely. I cannot give a very authoritative position on that. I'm sure the party or the coalition has a position on that. But what really sickens me, what really, you know, is, 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 is uh, shocking to all Kenyans is what kind of records, what kind of um, system do we have in the IEBC? How do you have an aspirant coming to the IEBC and the records of the IEBC, presumably what they have on their own uh, computers and data, indicates that she is... Uh, uh, for all practical purposes and legal purposes, she is qualified to run for this seat. So she is cleared and given a certificate. And, and the nomination period expires. A couple of days later, then you have this uh, so-called tribunal, which I've never understood what the role the tribunal uh, within IEBC plays. And then you say, she is not qualified now. We have withdrawn her certificate and, uh, and, and she can no longer run for that position. And that tells you a lot about the institution itself. The institution of IABC itself has a lot to be desired about. And I think that is an institution that needs to be reformed and overhauled for it to be able to reflect. We spent 9 billion Kenya shillings on a recording system, a data uh, that essentially took your picture, you have your ID number, your passport number, you have your fingerprints and everything else through the BVR. And here we are now. I don't know what kind of records they're using. They come up and tell it, first of all, failed during the elections, which in my opinion, uh, many people believe that it did not just fail. It might, it might have been deliberate. But why do you then go through the same thing again X number of months after the general election? Well, as you rightly say, uh, it's early days yet, and uh, that's not the reason primarily why you're here. Uh, we described you as the former Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, the 10th Parliament in the history books. So you were responsible for the creation of the Constitution. And therefore, one could put a very childish question to you and say, whatever's happening now is all your collective fault. How would you respond to that? Well, I think we do share part of the blame. But what you have to understand is that this country had made many efforts in the past to try and get a constitution. And, and to have parliament to, pr to play the role that essentially is, 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 is what is the practice world over, or rather in all other uh, democracies. But we never got a constitution. So we, within the wisdom of all the people who are involved in these things, after we had that, those problems in the post-election violence. It was decided that this was going to be, this, the role of getting a new constitution for Kenyans was going to be vested in a committee of experts. The committee of experts are the ones who worked out this constitution. All that parliament had to do, with an exception of a small proviso, was that they were going to approve and uh, disapprove it with, uh, with two-thirds majority or disapprove any clause or make any amendments and or disapprove it in, in its own totality or entirety. Parliament could not proceed and disapprove it in its own entirety. Parliament also did not have the powers in terms of numbers to move and rather succeed in moving any of the amendments and getting it amended. The 157 amendments that were proposed. In every case for you to be able to move that amendment you must have a two-thirds majority of the number of parliament, not of the quorum, which was coming to, I think, so 160. It would have been difficult. It to was impossible. It Everybody was impossible. who moved an amendment, right. uh, the, those ones who are not in, in favor of that amendment just walked out of the house. I don't know if you remember the saga we had that time in parliament. Yeah. So when they walk out of the parliament, the speaker or the person on the chair had the role of counting to see how many people are there. And none of, if they are less than two thirds, 
right. of the totality of the house itself, then you, the, 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 it's lost. Right. But the amendment is lost. But given the conversation that we're going, I wouldn't enter into the municiae of, of what should have been done. Look at the public perception now. I, 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 yeah, the I, public perception now, yes. and, I, and I'll put it to you yes. in some phraseology, yes. Yes. is that we are having a divided house. Precisely. This whole notion Precisely. of the bicameral Precisely. legislature Precisely. is going yes. all wrong. I agree and with I'm you. I'm asking you <laughs> why. I agree with you on that. The COE had a very, very good uh, provision in terms of the separation of the roles and the mandates of the two houses. Right. The Senate and the National Assembly. But what happened is that they went, we had what was called uh, a committee called the Parliamentary Select Committee. Members of the Parliamentary Select Committee sat with the COE in Naivasha. This is where, whereas the Parliamentary Select Committee had proposed a parliamentary system, it was changed to a presidential system. And at that time, unfortunately, this is a, that was a time when there was a lot of stresses within the political circles within PNU and within ODM and more 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 much more within ODM itself and 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 the, the so-called parliamentary system was lost and secondly most of the members who were there a good number of them who were in the senate at that time were not in favor of the senate so they ended up completely uh, eliminating all the powers of the senate and maintaining it just as a shell there in a sense that was supposed to have been the beginning of a process to kill the senate as 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 a uh, as, 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 a, as, a, as a lawmaking body. But uh, I'm sorry, I, I mean, we don't have the time to go into detail. At yes, one point, yes. you yourself had aspirations to be a senator. Yes. That I, is correct. I, I was and not, I, yes. And, 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 and you, 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 you obviously didn't become one. Yes. But had you become one, yes, yes. what was the house to which you thought you wished to belong? It was the Senate. The, the idea we had before, the Senate is supposed to be the house of the Union, the house that keeps this country together. No, the Senate, according to the public perception, is the one that's meant to oversee can I, can the, the, I, the, can the I, legislation of county governments. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm coming to. The Senate whole, the, equals county. The whole county issue itself right. was, is, is based on, on a framework that essentially is uniting the different diversity of this country in terms of ethnicities. Because that's why you have a county called Lamu with probably less than 100,000 population. And you have a county called Kakamega with probably 3.5 or 2.5 million population. And each one of them is represented by one senator. So in line with the way the American constitution itself and the way the American Senate was formed, where you have a state like Montana, whose House of Representatives uh, uh, legislators are supposed to be elected on the numbers of population, but they, they would have the same number of senators as two senators as, as California has, which has got 37 House of Representatives and only two senators. So in a way, it was supposed to unite the country. It was supposed to devolve power to, you know, a way of trying to, a House of Union. And the House of Union was premised on devolving resources to the county so that the money is not controlled at the center. I'm going to personalize it. Yes. Let us assume that you had become the senator. Let, let, me, let yes. me just, yeah. But, but you know the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm sort of cutting you short? Yes. Is because the entry into detail, we could, we could spend hours on this. And That's, basically yeah. the format of my show doesn't allow it. Yes. But I want to go to the nitty gritty of why the division now. Because, because the whole role, in my opinion, the legitimate role of Senate itself was separatized by the Parliament of the day, members of the Select Committee at that time. We also lost the possibility of having a parliamentary system of government led by a Prime Minister who is accountable to the people through Parliament at that time because of the politics of the moment. The only thing we hoped is that the issue of resources will be in the domain of the Senate. And the idea was that once you control the, the resources, which is exactly what it is also in a sense in the US, you can claw back a lot of powers because anything that has got expenditure, and by the way, everything has expenditure, was going to be part of the domain of the, or, or, of, of the parliament or the role of the mandate of the parliament. For example, the ratification of presidential appointments and many other things. But we don't have that now. As it is today, there is need for us to have an amendment to the constitution to allow the Senate to maintain certain teeth.